Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. Jake. <laughs> and this is Jake Reads Your Comments number... Probably Illegal Substances. Cool. So, today we're going to be reading more of your comments. Jake and I are going to be talking about it. Mostly Jake. That's the title of the show. Eh. Do you need more? Let's dive right in. This is from another Jake Reads, Andy Meacham, which is a great name. Uh, will you suck my cock for $200? And it is a picture of me in sunglasses. So. Right, but also, like, the way that's formatted, it kind of looks... And I know that's your mic, but it kind of looks like you're wearing, like, a tie and a dress shirt. A little bit. Okay. It got yeah. two thumbs up, and neither of them were you, by the way. I bet one of yeah. them was the guy that typed the comment, though. He seems like a self-liker to me. Yeah. You got a little self-love, uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, at this point in my life, how much money it would take for me to, like, stick an erect penis in my mouth. Is it clean, or is it... Uh, let's assume it's, like, let's assume mystery. the parameters are, like, you know, not like like a 7.5. Like, uh, average or above average, but not, like, you know, it's not, like, pristine. $10,000. $10,000 to stick a dick in your mouth? To yep. completion? To completion. Five for, five for no completion. Ah, I could... I do five grand for a no completion. BJ. No, I'll say five for hand completion. Ooh. three for no, three for you're on your own. I'll get you there, but you gotta you gotta take that last step. You get automatically charged if any gets on me. By the way, <laughs> automatically jumps you up to the five bracket. Sorry. <laughs> for an extra ten dollars, I'll throw in a splash guard for myself though, and that'll protect you in the long run. And that's really what I'm here to do. I'm the concierge to your to your man love pleasure. I, I just imagine a situation where they're like, you, you've given a hand job to almost completion, and then they're like, I'm going to finish this off myself. Don't, get, and then you try to like, you try to get in the way to, so you get more money. And they're like, they're, they're like trying to come without, while you're like, they're dodging you. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like dick laser tag. That is the only situation which I am attempting to try and get came upon. I'll give you that. <laughs> Good question. Jason McGinty says, Hello, Hugo and Jake. I'm a regular viewer of the channel, and tonight I went back to watch a couple of older Atheist Watch videos, such as Jesus Camp and Kidnapped for Christ. For some reason, for every goddamn video I wanted to watch, YouTube made me sit through a fucking seven-minute ad of Ty Lopez trying to sell me some bullshit, blah, 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 blah. You know that Ty Lopez guy that, I got Lamborghinis and a bookshelf! Uh, <laughs> is there any way you guys know of, just get rid of this his ads, or at least the seven-minute ones? Seven minute thing, by the way, that's you, uh, ads, even long ads on YouTube aren't supposed to go that long, I don't think, without the skip button. I think you have a, uh, like a add-on in your Chrome browser, or whatever browser you're using that's creating that. That's a glitch. But, anyway, go ahead. That was a good answer. That was a good part of that answer. Uh, as far as the long ads, the unskippable ads, on TBR we don't do unskippable ads. And if you ever get an unskippable ad... It wasn't our. It wasn't us. It's usually the companies that buy the ad space do it, and they're only supposed to go thirty seconds max, I believe, for unskippable. Yeah, and they're actually changing that, bumping that down to fifteen or twenty. Um, right, I think twenty is probably reasonable. I still yeah. personally, I I don't like it, and I I sometimes skip my own ads, so I get it. Like it's not a big. I don't feel compelled to do that unless you are interested in the products, because I think it's on the ads to do that. Or like if you really feel like ah, uh, because we do get. A little bit extra per year click, but honestly, it takes all of you, not just one of you. So, uh, it, as far as Ty Lopez, fuck, fuck that guy. I, I hope, I hope he goes bankrupt because it's just, come on, dude. I can also rent a Lamborghini or two and a house in the Beverly Hills for a weekend shoot, so I can make money with a scam book. That's it's unrelated, by the way. If his lawyers uh, see this, that's an unrelated comment about things I can do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the ads, buddy. Appreciate you going back, though. TC the Unbeliever says, No offense, but do you guys ever worry that people are asking you and other popular YouTubers for advice on major issues and life decisions instead of asking, well, someone who is qualified in whatever particular areas they're concerned about? I don't mean to give you shit. I'm just here and other places that people feel comfortable getting all kinds of advice from people who clearly may not be the best sources. I know this sounds like a rhetorical question, but it's not meant to be. I'd still trust you before Dr. Phil. Good question. I've actually wanted to address something like this on Ask You Go, but... For me, 
I feel like we are akin to like talking to a friend for assistance. Like, like when you ask a friend, like, okay, uh, I I met this person. I really like them. What do you think I should do here? Or I really don't like the situation I'm in. How do you think I should handle it? Or I gotta, I don't know. Help me get off tonight. Talk talk dirty to me, Hugo. That's never happened more than once. Um, and I just. I don't know, I, like, everything we say is in, like, a as a very casual, sort of, like, we don't expect you to, like, follow it to the T. I, I, always, I always kind of assume, like, these aren't really advice columns. It's more just like, yeah, we're talking, and that's what we would talk about. And this is the question. This is how we communicate to each other. So, I don't know, if I ever say something, like, and I think we do a pretty good job of, of like, you know, but there all are there's alternatives. We t- tend to give more than one option, like not like how to live your life. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I like to give our audience the benefit of the doubt to know yeah. that you're asking us questions, knowing the place we have, knowing what we do for a living. I don't answer the questions, assuming people take my advice at face value. You should always take everything I've ever said ever, assuming I could be completely wrong. And as I guess there are probably some people, especially younger viewers out there, who might. Yeah. Seeing we have, like, tens of thousands of subscribers, which doesn't mean anything, by the way. <laughs> it doesn't make me right or wrong. It just it doesn't makes make me you have more this. right or no. wrong, that's for sure. Um, So I'm sure there are some people out there, younger people, who might see us as, they must know something. We don't. Um, <laughs> But I like to think also when giving advice, especially if the question sounds like it's coming from a younger person who might be a little more naive and just take what I'm saying at face value, I like to think if it's something serious, if it's something... That is going to impact them. I say, I don't know. Or I say, yeah. you know, uh, I, I I don't have an answer for you. Maybe someone else does. Or I'll say in a situation where, for instance, we get a lot, should I tell my parents I'm an atheist? They're super religious. And the advice I give is generally advice. Like, not if you depend on them for your food. At the end of the day, my concern is for the safety of our audience. And I'll give the best advice I can. But... I think they know the guy with the Batman canvas prints and the Iron Man helmet well has his life together enough to pay his taxes and afford stupid toys is also a person who spends their hard-earned money on stupid toys and probably shouldn't be trusted entirely, so. Yeah, eh. uh, yeah. yeah it's, uh, take us with, like, a filter of, like, you know, do I want to end up like those guys? And some of you may think, well, they have a dream job. True. Uh, but also... <laughs> Erica from Twitter says, How did you decide you wanted to do YouTube? What a weird I'm, question. I know. It's... Uh, I'm gonna... Uh, okay. So we've gotten a lot of, like, how did you want to start the channel? Where did you get the inspiration for the channel sort of thing? Um, like the concept behind TBR. This is a little different. This is more of like, basically, why did you want to put yourself on YouTube? Um, now people do it, like, what was that, four, almost five years ago at this point? Uh, now people do it, like, they think about the money and stuff, but when we started, like, when we started around the same time Markiplier started, which, I mean, put that in contrast, we're failing. But, uh, or maybe he's just very successful. But um, people didn't really. It was really basically PewDiePie and everybody else. Uh, there were some. I mean, TJ was money. making. TJ, TJ was, was making, making some stuff, money. But, I don't, but I search, it, uh, he was probably at where where we're at as far as money because the, like the ads just exploded at one point. Um, I'd like to point out. I think around the time we started was when that South Park episode came out that made fun of people making funny on YouTube on mo- making money on YouTube. I mean, yeah. So yeah, it was. I don't know. It wasn't like a career choice. It certainly wasn't. No. We were we were uh, low wage workers working hard. I was going to school. Hugo had gone to school and like recently stopped for a second. And uh, honestly, we he was we were talking about going back to school before we decided to do this. Um, <laughs> but it's um, I guess the initial idea, like the content, putting it out on YouTube, was just like we think we're funny. In like a non-conceited way, like uh, like we say such ridiculous shit, obviously, all the time, and our friends enjoyed that, so it was more like chronicling it for them and kind of for us, 
And I don't know. It just ended up being a thing we did. I wish we would have had cameras right away, though. Yeah. You know, I we didn't have any it. money for any of that shit. I know. If we had had better equipment, we'd be in a much better place. But I'd also like to put on top of that a very honest answer. I enjoy, and this is funny, especially, Jake, you'll consider this funny considering you knew me before we've done the show more and I'm more open to talking to people and I'm more comfortable yeah. expressing oh. myself verbally. Very different person, this Hugo now. I enjoy attention too much, too much, to the point where it is bad for me, and I end up doing very stupid things. For instance, uh, like what I brought up the story before when I was in kindergarten, a bit I used to always do to get a laugh because I liked attention, was in kindergarten we had this little dress-up area, which was aside from the rest of the play area. So I'd go in there and I'd put on the pink princess dress and come out and everyone would laugh. Because that's, I don't know, attention's always been a bigger thing to me than uh, self-respect. And that's how you get someone who makes jokes for a living, is someone who cares more about getting attention than they do their own dignity. And well, that yeah. is how you wind up with butter on your nipples as one of the... <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I think it's important. Like, some people say, like, ah, you're attention whores. Not to usually us, but to people on YouTube specifically, or like a Twitter thing. That You, you don't do this because you don't want attention. Yeah. If you don't that's... like attention, this is a bad job for you because you get it. Not only that, why are you yelling at us? I was being this verbose and this big of a dick before I was on camera. Blame these idiots watching. Yeah. That's their fault. It All these fault. thousands of enablers. Yeah, I'm on every you. one of you. Yeah. yeah. Love you. I do too. You guys are great. Uh, I, don't... I, I, I do remember both of us being like, kind of like, man, everything's boring here. And we're like, kind of in a rut. We're like, let's, I want, like, a project to work on. So that was also kind of part of it, I think. I remember you specifically saying, I just want to put my energy into something. Oh. So. That's very unlike me. Motivated to do something. Oh, God. Uh, early Hugo motivation was non-existent, which is fine. Wow. Uh, it's much better now. You're, 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 a, you're an adult, almost. Almost. I'm, I'm trying to stop it, though. This is... Yeah, uh... these are like, these are like, uh, well, I don't know. If you look at it, it's getting a little more refined. We got the Harold Penisman and the toys and shit, but but then we have like Kurt Vonnegut. I'm a huh? I have a uh, the God Delusion. You got me. Forever War by Dexter Filkins. I think the most adult thing I have in this room is probably the large empty bottle of Crystal Head vodka I bought for my birthday like three and a half months ago. It's pretty cool. So um. By the way, if anyone uh, has seen Red Letter Media, their thing on this, uh, the Ghostbusters review, or you're curious about this, uh, not worth it. Just get some, like, mid-range vodka. It's fine. It's just got a cool Svedka. bottle. Svedka's my favorite cheap vodka. Don't drink, kids. Bree on Twitter says, Do you think anyone can learn anything if they try hard enough, or are some people just incapable of learning some concepts? I think, anyone, I think anyone without a, a mental disability has an opportunity to at least understand to some level. I, like, I don't, I don't think I could learn how to be a really good, like, like Olympian. You know what I mean? But I could I could I could go through the training and do it and understand how all the things work. It just it just it, it depends on your everyone's got kind of like a, an adaptability at certain things and you just kinda of gotta find that. But I do think as far as especially like subjects, like school subjects, anyone that's that wants to learn can learn. As long as you don't have like a block like a mental issue. I think the question is a little too yes no for me. For instance, I could answer this question similar to Jake, but I would also say there are outer edges to this. I think it all exists within a range. For instance, I think someone like Albert Einstein, obviously there are other examples, really, really smart people just on the edge who are the, the statistical anomalies. Yeah. I think they can figure out things and understand <coughs> things that the average person cannot mm -hmm. because, you know, their brains just work better in that regard. But I agree that the average person can learn almost anything it's just that the level of difficulty for that particular person is going to be different i'm bad at math i'm never going to be good at math i could be if i tried real hard and it's never going to come easy for me but i could learn the stuff it would just take longer than for some people exactly i have a really hard problem with things that i can't actually apply 
like the knowledge of those things just it it irks me that like math specifically was one that really like after a certain point it was like algebra 2 after algebra 2 it just it didn't care anymore cuz it was just like stuff I'm never going to use cuz I'm not interested in the in the fields that need this sort of shit I'm interested in more of the conversation and the implication in, this, in the societies and the governments and the politics and the all the shit, which is why I like history and literature. Uh, but yeah, I don't. There's just some stuff that I'm. I, if you're not interested in it, it's not that you can't learn it. It's just it's just you're, you'll resist it, and that's that's fine. And and that's kind of an indictment on our education system a little bit because yeah, uh, we don't we don't really fold to the preferences or abilities of people enough. I feel like there's almost a situation where we should send kids to school later and have like three years of preschool. <laughs> Maybe. You know Maybe. what I mean? Like like four, five, six sort of preschool and obviously you'd learn similar shit. But by the time you're a senior in high school, 18 years old, uh, maybe... And this could just work in the, the free college if you want to work it that way in your head. Um, it could basically be the same thing. Like have have modalities a learning modality is something if you don't know it's uh you, you look at a person some people uh, learn visually or auditory or tactile or there's myriad of different ways some people learn in combinations or gradients of any of those and as a as a teacher um they teach you when you go to be a teacher in, in college they, they teach you kind of like you have to identify these modalities because some people like note taking is really popular in yeah. like government classes and history classes but some people don't like notes. Some people are like, I would rather listen, so let them bring a recorder. So you allow that for some people, and some people you don't allow that because it would they wouldn't learn as well. So And it's the, just that little stuff like that that we don't actually do or some places don't allow that I think would really, really help people. Like I'm more of a hands-on sort of – like I like to take notes, but I like to have a conversation. That's how I – if I can talk about like a concept, I'll remember it. Because my brain is fucking all over the place yeah. all the time. I need real world examples for concepts to stick. For instance, yeah. post high school, I've learned more about civics and how our government works just from like yep. following actual politics and being like, oh, why is this the way it is? And, and then you look and it up. Participating. And participating. Yeah. I know more about civics now than I did in, you know, as you should. You should continue to learn. But you know what I mean. I learned more post high school, post formal education about civics than I did in it. Because it was just abstract concepts, not seeing it in motion. But that's just me. So, Chris Carson, how big do you think Ron Perlman's dick is? Hellboy's dick is fucking huge. It's it's big, right? I assume I don't know if the I, length is any more than average, but it's. I feel like it's heavier than the average dick. I feel like the perfect adjective is meaty. Yeah, meaty, like girth. not even. I wouldn't even say girthy. I would say meaty, like it, dense. You, you need an onomatopoeia word that, that that's the sound of a big meaty dick slapping on a table because that's what that is right there. That's my opinion on Ron Perlman's yeah, dick. Yeah, it's just like it feels like if you cut it off and you cut off another person's dick that looked the same, it would weigh more. Am I thinking about Ron Perlman's dick too much? I don't think other people are thinking about Ron Perlman's dick enough. That's why we're friends. Hercules Rockefeller, you guys are grown men. When are you going to put away the kids' toys <laughs> in the background? Hey, I referenced this earlier. Nice. You need you like need some guns and animal heads on your walls. I know this is probably a joke, especially because later on in the comments he jokes around. Um But to people like um especially the kids watching, don't don't let people tell you what you can like. Just fucking like the thing and love the thing and like enjoy the thing with the people that like the thing as well. It's there's no point in not doing that because if you just like a thing, I I think geeking out about stuff with people is like one of my favorite human experiences. Sharing a like for a thing, I I think that I think that's a good thing. So don't let don't let uh, Hercules make butts of face from Rockefeller tell you tell you what. I also like that this person. I like that they think that my entire house is decorated like this. Oh yeah, no, this is honestly <laughs> I have this and then there's a playroom in the other room. Uh but that's for children. And then the rest of my house has like bookshelves and like my kitchen is a person kitchen. <laughs> I 
for the record, if anyone out there doesn't know, I put these things here knowing they would be on camera. And yeah. it, it's, this is the best. This isn't for, it's for a, the, there's nothing on that wall or this wall. This yeah. wall is here. I actually have for the camera. <laughs> I actually have actual art above here. This That's is an actual we, piece of art. Look at that art. You know, like real art, but you don't get to see that. You get to see it, you get to see the flair that I decided to put on in the biz. And let, let me slow me down if this is too much jargon for you. <laughs> in the biz, this is what we call a set. Too much. Do you have a smaller word to describe that? Uh. I don't. I don't. I don't. This That's is the smallest set. one. That's as low as it gets. <laughs> anyway, good question. <laughs> also, if I had like a million animal heads on my wall, I would look like a serial killer. The ironic thing is a lot of this shit is literally things that I got in like a loot crate or whatever that I said to myself, this is too tacky to put in my actual house. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, the re like all of this is stuff that I like. Like I enjoy a Batmobile, but am I, am I going to put this... This objectively cool Boba Fett samurai thing in my house house? This is where it goes. It goes on my desk and it's just fun. I play video games here sometimes. I don't know. I don't take myself that seriously. My life isn't that uh, severe, I guess. This this camera's all fucky. There it is. Now you can see the Hugo and Jake. Ooh. Oh, it's brand new. Oh, no. if we're going to talk about this, check oh. mine out. Oh, yeah. It's a nice burgundy. Oh, yeah. Just, oh. Oh, available the at the logo. link in the description. That's all Rub I'm it. saying. Limited time only, and this is the this is the first production of this. So you got a week. Yeah, but basically a week. It's payday. You, you, we know it's payday. We know what day you get paid. The neon pogo dancer. Final comment. Nice, nice picture there. I think you guys might be the only atheist YouTubers I know that still talk about the actual atheism and religion part, as well as other interesting topics such as conspiracy theories, instead of just shouting about the, uh, and then one of those, uh, those, those Mexican guys. dashes, uh, social <laughs> justice warriors or whatever. Thanks for that. Uh, also, did you notice that this is from an Ask Hugo? I couldn't do a Jake Reads without poaching just one, so my uh, last one was from you. I actually, fine. Inst I, I went there on purpose to take one. Oh, well, that's Just a little... so you know. It, I did it to hurt you. That's a little over the line, but... <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm glad that you appreciate that. I think uh, people like us, Logic, and Dark Matter are kind of, air quotes, the only ones that don't really talk about that stuff. I mean, people like TJ, he hasn't really been like... That's kind of what he's been doing for years now, so it's I don't really count him in there. Um, Armored Skeptic just kind of stopped doing that recently, which I think his content has gotten better since. Because... I don't know about you, but like the burnout was real for me and it felt like it was real for content creators. Now, sometimes the conversation can be interesting or something, but like I've seen so many Steve Shive takedown videos that I'm just like real over it. Um, people like Chris Raygun still do a good job. Like he's real funny. So it's not like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't, but like Dave Rubin, what a fucking hack piece of shit. Dave Rubin sucks now. Dave Rubin is trash. If you like Dave Rubin, unsubscribe. Peter Molyneux, fucking uh, Paul Joseph Watson, fucking uh, uh, Scrowder, Stephen Crowder, trash. They're just it's just a hack job. It's just so bad, and it's like, can we just talk about fucking any like a policy or like actual politics and not this like, oh snowflakes are bad, they're triggered. You're just you're the same thing. You're on the other side of that fucking coin. Someone punches a guy that other people call a Nazi and you lose your fucking minds. Someone punches some lady with a hippie, you lose your fucking minds over here. This is... <laughs> Good answer. So I'm not, in, I'm not interested in this conversation, honestly. We talk about what we find interesting and that's... Yeah. I, I'm that's glad you guys rule. appreciate that, but I also don't want anyone to get the impression that it's because we're trying to cater to you and not... It's just we don't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we... you can tell fr from what we talk about, like, we don't agree with Steve Shives. We're also not Trump supporters. Like, there's a middle in there, you know? There's a... And I'm not saying I'm a centrist. I'm not. I'm definitely a liberal. But it's not, like... Far left is pretty weird right now. So. <laughs> I Everything thought... I honestly, weird. growing up, I was, like, the furthest left person in my friends group. Not even close to what happens in Twitterverse... 
Like, it, it, it's actually kind of surprising that people can get further left than, like, we should socialize medicine. <laughs> like, you know well, what I mean? Like, I didn't, you know, before, Mo I'm going to say Web 3.0, whatever the fuck we're on, I don't know. Before, like, let's say the last five years, I didn't realize how many legitimate supporters of fascism, racism, sexism, whether it's towards men or women, uh, genuine communists, anarchists... I right. didn't know how many of you motherfuckers were out there. Right, from just the far left categories. and far right. It's like you're Everywhere. just fucking dumb. Or like straight libertarian. How can you... That doesn't even function. We've done that. It doesn't work. It just doesn't. There's there's like nothing... Like you're like, freedoms! Yeah, you lose your freedoms when someone else has more freedom than you to do fucking fuck your freedom. Like if you don't... Uh, if you don't have someone controlling the amount of freedoms another person can have, they tread on your freedoms, and it's worse than before when someone was controlling your freedoms. Imagine, anyway. it, it's like this. Hold on, one more. It's okay. like this. I'll if you're that. on a highway, and you can only afford a bicycle, right? You're, you're on a bicycle. The highway, can, you, you have the freedom to use the highway on your bicycle now. There's some people, like, and maybe everyone has bicycles, but then there's some people that can afford to have Lamborghinis, and they're going 300 miles an hour down this thing. Is that safe for you? Does that make you better? Does that make it, does that make it a good situation for you to be on a, a bunch of you on bicycles? No, it doesn't. It's a bad thing. Or if it helps, make it a semi. That's a little more... Feels a little more splatty than... Boingy. Okay. That's a good anyways, example. Anyways, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we don't talk about that stuff. Oh, we do have. We will have. Uh, we're going to. We just had the website. If you haven't visited the website, hugoandjake.com is a real place, and it's pretty cool. And uh, a lot of hard work went into it. Um, and we pimp links to the stuff in there, and it's going to help eventually. I don't know if we got the ads sorted yet. It's going to help supplement this uh, YouTube stuff. But also, we can put stuff on there that we can't put on YouTube, which is the big point. Um, we also will have a standing merch store, so stuff like this won't be, well, this will be limited, but like standard TBR shirts, and we'll have some standard logo stuff that is always available, probably through Teespring at this point. They seem to have driven the best bargain. And, um, some stuff that you guys maybe not expect, like some 3D printed stuff that was kind of in the alpha stage of, of talks. And, um, a forum, we have official discords, uh, we got a lot of stuff going on, but we also have, uh, a new idea for, a, a content uh, and i don't want to give away too much right now but um this conversation that we're having could maybe extend into a much longer podcast style form with guests is that too much information did i give it too you literally just said what the idea was but okay oh <laughs> but it's sneaky i okay. wonder what i wonder what it'll be called Jesus Christ. So anyway, you can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You can follow Hugo, Hugo Reloaded. You can also subscribe to this channel to get more of this, whatever this was. It's uh, hot in here. I should not have put this this on. This is no, ugh, it's not good for the climate. Yeah. Like we said, uh, these uh, hoodies or t-shirts or whatever you want to get them in, yeah. they're available in the description. Got uh, men's for... sizes, women's sizes, tank tops, and hoodies. Yep, uh, if you're into video games at all, over at Unpop, our other channel where we talk about media and stuff, mm -hmm. we're going to be doing live coverage of various E3 conferences this weekend oh, yeah. live, so pop in over there if you want to yeah. check out some of our stuff. I've also been that. doing food reviews. Yeah. So, you did uh, You did something. You did, What was it? Chips? You did those chips? I did chips. I actually still have... I, people are like, aren't you on a diet? I, I ate three chips out of this. Three. Three chips. Actually, it was forks at the end. I ate one of everything all at once. I still have them. Hmm. I just, I can't. I did eat this bag, though. These are really good. And also, Canada sent me food. And I ate that. Some of it. Well, I didn't eat By all the way, I, uh, we are still doing the weight loss thing, everyone. If you hadn't oh, been yeah. following that. I'm down, I think, 12 to 15 pounds. I gotta get on a scale again. I don't, I don't My remember. My scale, actually, I don't. it's one of those fancy, like, you step on it. It's got, like, profiles. Yeah. And now I step on it, and it just says pick a profile, and I don't know how to do that because I'm fucking retarded. So I'm just going to get an analog scale at some point. I don't know what I'm at, but I, I last time I checked, I was, I was more than you, but I started earlier. Yeah. So I have more I to lose as well, I think. so. Yeah. So anyone in our audience who's doing that with us, stay encouraged. We are still on it with you. Uh, oh, if yeah. Anyone is, I'm going to go run right after this. If anyone has faltered or given up, 
there's still a chance you can get back on board with us. You don't have to. What do we? What do we? I is it by Christmas? You. Is it by the New Year? Uh, yeah, by the New Year. I don't know. That could be good. Okay, we'll figure something else out. So until next time, I'm Yuko. Jake, we're gonna eat hot pockets, aren't we? I think oh. we'll just both end up eating hot pockets together. Oh God. I have a feeling this road ends in Hot Pockets one way or another. <laughs> I don't know what form they will take, but they are there waiting. Maybe we shouldn't have taken the highway titled Hot Pocket Highway. Probably. Next time, uh, better than the Lean Pocket Expressway is all I'm saying. Oh, so. maybe that's what we get if we both win. We have to eat Lean Pockets. Ah. Uh, I don't want diarrhea as a state of being. <laughs>